Welcome to Mr. Woods Teaches Middle School Math Survival Guide. I'm Fred Woods, ready to teach. Hi everyone, this is Mr. Woods Teaches. And today, we're continuing the series for 8th grade end of year mathematics. And this is going to be video 2 of 5. Let's dig in. Okay, let's look at number 6. And it's number 6 because video 2 is a continuation from video number 1 where we did problems 1 through 5. Line T will be graphed on the same grid. The only solution of the linear equations formed by lines S and T occurs when X is equal to 3 halves and Y is equal to 0. Which equation could represent the line T? So we're just looking for the equation. We don't have to graph line T. However, let's take a look at things. We have a couple of things that here we see it have X is equal to 3 halves and Y is equal to 0. That's the solution for both of them. And so this is x-intercept here. So if we look at here, x when x is equal to 3 halves for s, it's definitely 0 for y. Let's work these equations. All we have to do is input x, which is 3 halves, into these here. So y equals 3 halves, and then x is 3 halves. And I already know that that does not equal to 0 because 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 2 is 4, it's not 9 fourths. I'm not even going to finish that one. Boom. Done. Let's look at the next one. y is equal to 4 thirds x, which is 3 halves, minus 2. Okay, does that equal to 0? Let's find out. So I know that 3 and 3, that's 1. And I know that 2 goes into 4 two times. So I have 2 minus 2, that does equal to 0. So this is a solution for line T. But we can check the others as well. Look at this. There's no x variable, so that's definitely not that one. And here, we can look at this and it's like, well, wait a minute. If I just put, plug it in, y is equal to minus 2 thirds times 3 halves, which is x, plus 3 halves. That does not equal to 0, because if I look at this, this, this right here is 1, and 1 minus 1 and a half is equal to negative 1 half here. So it does not equal to 0, so this is definitely not a solution for both equations. 7. Review triangle H and triangle J. And there's H and J. And this is telling me something that looks like it's going to be a transform, and yes it is. Which sequence does not transform triangle H to triangle J? There's the H and J triangles. A, a 180 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. B, a 180 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin. C, a reflection over the x-axis, and then a reflection over the y-axis. D, a reflection over the y-axis, and then a 90-degree clockwise rotation about the origin. Well, let's get started back up here. I want to see exactly what they're looking for. So which sequence does not, and I'm going to circle that, does not transform. So we're trying to find the sequence that is not true here. But we have to work through these. So let's take a look. A 180 degree clockwise rotation about the origin. So first I want to label this. So this is X and Y. So my axes. Clockwise is going this direction. So that's I'm going to be rotating. As, just think as if I have a stick here and I'm rotating this around 90 degrees. So it's going to be like this way over here. So where am I going to, where are we going to be placing this? Well, let's label this. So this is A, B, and C for the vertices of this triangle. I'm going to do this two steps just to show you the process that you have to go through. I can translate it, but I want to show you how you can do it step by step. So I have X here is negative 1, negative 2, so I'm just going to do like the absolute value of that and go, okay, that's 2, and then 1 in the positive direction. So that's going to make it so that this is 1, 2, and then 1 over here. Okay, and that's going to give me A1. Since B is on this 
line here that makes it so that it's going to be here and it's over negative 5 so I go up 5. I'm going to label that B1 and then C is on this vertical line so it's going to be on the same horizontal here and it's up 5 so I go over 5 as well Oops, C1 you get the picture so there's my triangle for there I could do better with those lines but there you go you got the idea how it's translating now I'm going to repeat this and it, when I rotate it around again another 90 degrees so if I'm one two here in the y direction and one in the x direction I'm going to do similar here so it's going to go down one and one two so this is my a2 and then c2 or is going to be here because it's rotating 90 degrees and then b2 again it's in the same on that same one so it's one here one here and if you look at it it's almost like uh, I reflect it down and over that might be something else so 180 degree clock rate rotation around the origin that is true so if it's true then it's not an answer to this because we're looking for does not be a 180 degree counterclockwise rotation about the origin well I could plot it out but I'm not because it's just going to be the same thing it's going to I'm going to rotate counterclockwise which is this way it's going to give me a similar triangle but a reflection over here so one two again and then one over so it's going to be one over and then one two I'm going to have I'll just plot it out real quick there's that B and then C is going to be uh, out here okay and then I'm going to rotate it again and because this is a B C and it'll just line up in the same spot so that's definitely that's true but it's not an answer to the problem D a reflection over the y-axis then a 90 degree clockwise rotation about the origin okay so reflection over the y-axis again this is the y-axis and I'm going to do reflection so one two and it's on you know one up it's in the y direction one up but I go over two one two I'll call that a4 and then my my C is going to be right in line there so it's up at the five here and that's going to be C4 and B4 is out at uh, 1, 5. There's B4. Try to draw this a little bit nicer than the others. Get a better idea of what we're looking at. So there we go. So I have this triangle. It's a nice reflection. And now it says. Uh, a clockwise rotation about the origin so I'm going this way with my rotation and remember how we did this so instead of it's not just coming down here it's going to be rotating about the origin so if it's two in this direction I'm going to go one two and it's only one in the y direction so I only go one in the y direction so I'm going to call that a5 and then B5 is going to be in that same line here. That's B5. And then C5 is going to be right here. So C5. As you can see, this triangle does not match uh, triangle J. So this right here is the answer. It was the answer by default, but just to make sure to validate your answer that you can show the work say hey I did the work I know what it is and there you go number eight what is the solution to the equation shown well, we have this equation right here two-thirds x plus five is equal to one so we have to show that it's true and the easiest way to do it is just start plugging in numbers so we can do that and note here that since this is plus we're probably gonna have to have a negative number so I can just eliminate this one here and I can eliminate this one here so let's take a look uh, negative 6 so 
2 thirds times negative 6 plus 5 equals 1. Well, this is actually negative 6 over 1. So I'm, I can go here and go, well, this is multiplying. 3 times 1 is 3. And I know that 3 goes into 6 2 times. So it's actually 2 times 2, or 2 times negative 2. So that's negative 4 plus 5 equals 1. Well, this is true. Yeah, so that is a solution. But is this a solution here? X is equal to negative 4.5. Let's take a look. But first, since we have a fraction here, let's convert this into a fraction. So 4.5, uh, it's 4 and 5 tenths, or however you want to do it. But I know that that's a half, so that's 4 and 1 half. And I'm doing that because I notice that the, in the numerator here, there's a 2. So I want to have, I'm going to have this 2 here. So this is going to be 2 times 4 is 8 plus 1. That is equal to 9 halves. So now I have 2 thirds times 9 halves. I'm just going to do this. Just plus 5 equals 1. So cancel this out, cancel this out. Oh, and that's negative. Ooh, I forgot to do that. That's negative. So 3 goes into itself one time in here, 3 times. So it's negative 3 plus 5. And that does not equal 1. So this is not the answer as well. This is definitely the answer is x is equal to negative 6. 9. The table represents linear function f. So we have this linear function f right here. The equation y equals 4x plus 2 represents function g. So, oh, this probably could be where we have g of x, the function g. Not given as much. It says the rate of change of function g is less than, oh, okay, then the rate of change of function f because 2 is less than 3. B, the rate of change of function g is less than the rate of change of function f because 4 is less than 9. The rate of change of function g is greater than the rate of change of function f because 2 is greater than 9 sevenths. And the rate of change of function g is greater than the rate of change of function f because 4 is greater than 3. So we have to understand what is the rate of change. So the rate of change, well, let's take a look at this, this right here. y equals mx plus b. Okay. This is just a standard linear equation, and that's what this is here. So this right here, this is that m, and that equals the slope. And the slope is a rate of change because it's going to be, so m, if you're trying to figure it out, so m is equal to y2 minus y1 over x2 minus y, or x1. Okay, so this is this, this here. What we have is we have the func, we have this for g. So I know my rate of change for g is 4, but what is it for, for f, for that f of x? So let's take a look. So I'm gonna, I need to find out this right here for this. So what, what I can do is I can say, well, my m is equal to, and here's my y2 is 24, minus y1, which is 18. And then I have my x, so there's 6, minus 4, and that's going to give me an m is equal to, so 24 minus 18 is 6 over 2, because 6 minus 4 is 2, which is equal to 3, because 2 goes into 6 3 times. So I could write this out, you know, as y is equal to 3x plus b. I can figure out b later. Uh, I can just plug it in you know, to figure that out for all of this. But do I need to do that? Because it's just asking about the rate of change. 
So, and that's going to be this number here. Uh, so I have a 4 and a 3. Nope, nope, nope. The rate of change for functions g right here, which is, this is g, and that is 4, is greater than the rate of function f, which is the rate of change of function f is here. This is function f of x. Let's just do that. Okay, rate of change function f. Okay, is 4 is greater than 3. Yes. So I was able to do the math to validate it, but you have to understand what a standard linear equation is and how to find slope. This is that slope. M is equal to slope. You have to understand how to use that equation to find the slope for a standard linear equation. Number 10, a company performed power tests on a set of batteries of the same type. The company determined that the equation y equals 100 minus 8.9x, where x is the number of hours of use and y is the percent of battery power remaining, models the battery life. Based on the equation, what is the best prediction of the percent remaining power for the battery after 11 hours of use. Let's pull out the important information. A company performed power tests on a set of batteries of the same type. The company determined that the equation, so this is important, if one, y equals 100 minus 8.9x, where x is the number of hours of use, okay, let's, I'm gonna circle that, that's important, and y is the percent of the power, power remaining models the battery life. Based on the equation, what is the best prediction of the percent, ah, this is what we need, the percent remaining of power of the battery after 11 hours of use. So it says here, if we look in here, X is the number of hours of use. Well, let's just look at that. So Y is equal to 100 minus 8.9 X, and X is 11. Well, this is easy to multiply out, or you can just do this. Just do 8.9, and we're just going to add this up. Put a 0 here, 9, and 8, because if I multiply, if this, this is 1 times 8.9, and this right here, that is 10 times 8.9. That's what that did here. So I just add it up, 9, 7, 97.9. But are we done? Notice how I brought that decimal point down. No, because we still have to plug it into the equation. So y is equal to 100 minus 97.9. And that is going to equal to 2.1. Because if I add 2 here and then add that, Point 0.1 here, this makes it 3, so it's going to be 100. That makes it 0. Yes. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. And remember, to be a math person, all you have to be is a person that does math.